Hello everyone, welcome back to Link Story. So this week I'm back with a very special interview. So as you can probably guess from the headline and thumbnail, my guest for this week is a foreigner, a Jai Tay. I recently have a great discussions with him about a phenomenon that Vietnamese in Vietnam are so obsessed with American politics, especially with the president of the United States, Donald Trump. I think he has such an interesting take and he has agreed for me to share his thoughts with you guys. However, he wishes to remain anonymous while he still is in Vietnam. So he said I could use the image of Yves Saint Laurent's actor in replacement for him. So here it is. Let's start with a simple question. Why are Vietnamese in Vietnam are so obsessed with American politics? And hear what he said. Well, I guess one reason is that politics in Vietnam is a very, very dual affair that normal Vietnamese have no say in or no influence over. Talking about American politics is an escape from this situation, but also in a way an entertainment. The only problem I have with the way Vietnamese do this, meaning talking about American politics, is that most of them know very little about what they are talking about. They are pretty clueless at the level of actual knowledge. Most of them have no clue what's in the American constitution, how elections work, how American parties work, what the different parts of government do, what the so-called Tam Quyn Phan Lop are, how America exercise power politically, economically, culturally throughout the world. They are also clueless at the level of practical experience. That is, they have no understanding of the culture of, of engagement in and debate about political life. Vietnamese relate American politics at barracks, meaning supporters for one team in a football match. So they uncritically support the left liberal side or the conservative side. But in most cases, they couldn't even say what Pacific believes or what general ideas go with being a left liberal or a conservative. Well, I would like to add that I think in this case, most Vietnamese who has been supporting Donald Trump and following the American politics are more likely going to be conservative. About the large number of Vietnamese who support Trump, the only reason they support him in most cases is they think he has a hard-assed attitude to China. Among some young Vietnamese, it's also because he shoots up at the mouth in an entertaining way. Another underlying reason, a sad one, is that he represents the type of the strongman leader. You could say this Vietnamese hankering after a political strongman it is down to one dumb bad idea about politics. To have a strong country, you need to have a strong leader. This is obviously not true, by the way. Strong leaders who aggressively stand up for the rights, unity, strength of their nations often do two things that lead, not just to weakness, but to disaster. They start wars and they throw their political opponents in jail, or at least demonize people who oppose them. On the other hand, in modern democracies, power is divided according to the idea of separations of power, meaning them quyền phân lập not concentrated in the hands of a strong man. But I'd say in Vietnam's case, the strange desire for a strong man leader is much more complex than this. It is a relic of the Vietnamese feudal period, when kings were treated as gods, thiên tử, you know, and when the dominant understanding of politics were provided by Nho Yao. What Nho Yao basically said was, people should respect and obey the national god king in the same way that they should respect and obey their fathers in the family and their elders in the village. The nation, Vietnam, should be a bigger version of a traditional family in which ancestors were worshipped and the father exercised more or less absolute authority. All in all, a deeply conservative, pre-modern understanding of politics. Now think about it, Vietnamese have, in their history, which spans 1000s of years, never really know any other way of thinking about politics than this. We are talking about a deep psychological and cultural habit. The only real political habit that could counterbalance the Vietnamese desire for a powerful national father figure has never been encouraged. Vietnamese never had the experience of meaningfully participating in a political discussions or decision making. So they have no idea what it means 
for people to agree to disagree, for people with different political beliefs, forming different parties, to compete and debate, and to compromise with each other in exercising power. Actually, in the past, we did have multiple parties. We did have Đảng Lao Động, Đại Việt Quốc Dân Đảng, for example. Some of them merged into the Vietnamese Communist Party, the VCP. Some of them just dissolved, died out completely. What we have remained is one party state. And since the Communist Party took over, we never really have what he said here is for people with different political beliefs, forming different parties to compete and debate and to compromise with each other in exercising power. That is not what happening in Vietnam right now. Vietnamese are used to all the people making big political decisions and so they naively think that it's better if one man make all the decisions because that way everything would be simpler and the country could go in one clear direction. Vietnamese do hanker after a strong man because the current political system doesn't provide anything like that. They look overseas for something to satisfy this ancient political urge. They start supporting Trump in a way which is just downright bizarre. Like they are his diehard supporters. Even though most of them know very little about America, have never been there, and never will. The Vietnamese adore him because he's bring together the two most powerful elements in their political psychology. First, a desire for a dictator, which I think is a sign of a deep political immaturity, and a hatred or mistress of China, which is historically much more understandable. But behind these two elements, there seems to be something more basic. It is the way Vietnamese worship power itself. How can they possibly worship Trump after having sort of worshipped Obama, who was the total opposite of Trump? The only answer I can think of is, Obama, like Trump, sat on the political throne of the world. He was, for eight years, the most powerful person in the most powerful country in the world, as Trump is now. In some senses, Vietnamese simply worship these men because they were powerful. And by the way, in my seven years in Vietnam, I have heard several Vietnamese expressing their admiration for Hitler as a strong leader. So that's part one in which An Jiang Chai Tay explained why he thinks Vietnamese in Vietnam are obsessed with American politics and President Donald Trump. We'll be back with the second part in which he will explain why Trump is bad for Vietnam and the world. So see you in the next video.